<laughs> Hello, so we are out having a nice bit of walkage. Taking uh, the backpack for its first test spin. Yeah, we're going to keep this intro really short because the video is already quite long. Uh, but I think I'm going to put some new plans up, hopefully, that have been annotated. So make sure to check them out. And hopefully, I'll be able to publish them as a PDF as well. So hope you enjoy the video. Hope, um, hope, hope, everyone, hope, hope you build the backpack. Building one. And anyone who does build it, be 100% sure to let us know. Either leave a comment yeah. go on our Instagram because we would love to see any backpacks Definitely. that you guys make. Good morning, it's weekend number four. I've just got up and I am very excited to do some backpack work this morning. I just checked out last week's um, video. I didn't show you the awesome straps that I made at the end of the day after I had stuffed the foam in them. So let's go get them out of the shed and show them. Righty ho, here are the stuffed backpack straps from last week. Uh, they were a lot of effort to stuff into these, um, the foam put into the things, but after enough trial and effort, basically I was just shoving it in and in until I you know, get it all the way to the bottom. Um, you can see this one looks a slightly different texture because this one I put in like turned inside out about 10 times and this one I think I got on the second go. So this one is a lot more crinkled, but I'm sure with time this one will crinkle and look like that one as well. Um, they're gonna go so onto this um, back panel here. The first job for this morning, obviously they'll be flipped around because this is the inside of the straps. You can see with the pockets there, one bit of the pocket and there's the other bit of the pocket. Um, first thing we're going to do this morning is cut out a new piece of square of Dyneema uh, to stick to sew onto the inside here. So that the seam, the main seam, has just got a double layer of um, Dyneema to make it a bit stronger. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out a 30 by 15 centimeter uh, square of Cuban and then I'm going to sew it uh, from the bottom here along these edges so that it covers up this back panel here just so that anything that I stitch onto here has got double strength. Okay, so I just uh, went ahead and stitched on the outer reinforcement panel as well. So you can see there's a line of stitching on there. And as before that, um, I also stitched on the back reinforcing, which has got, um, so I originally just stitched along these two edges. And then this line of stitching was just added in when I added the uh, other reinforcement. So now the straps go in here and then this will go down and stick to them. Uh, first up though, I've got some hardware bits and bobs to stick on, so the ladder locks go on the outsides of the straps, sort of like this, and then I'm going to put one of the uh, chest buckles on, on this side, facing inwards like that. Okay, so there's the hardware sewn into the straps. That actually went on really nicely. You can see two fairly neat bar tacks. I just did that with a couple of passes of the um, zigzag stitch on the machine. And I went ahead and added this one in as well. I'm not going to do this side yet because um, this side's just a piece of webbing, 15 mil webbing, and that would be ooh, dangling around. So I'll do that at the end once they're actually sewed onto the backpack just to save me having to deal with a dangly piece of rope. Okay, so now it's time to make these wings which um, sew into the main seams of the backpack and attach the webbing which goes onto the main straps. Uh, so last time I made them, or on my previous backpack, I made them way too big and I think I angled them out a little bit too much. Um, well, on the backpack before, I think they were just right. I think last time I was trying to get, uh, I was anticipating the backpack straps to be a lot longer and now I've shortened them quite significantly. So I want to go back to pointing upwards. So I think I'm going to go back to having a 90 degree angle up here. So it just makes making the whole thing much easier. So the way I do this is normally pattern it on a piece of paper because there's lots of folding going on. Don't forget to leave some seam allowance for this top bit here and seam allowance to go into the backpack. Uh, I will document the process of making the pattern now. Okay, so the way I've done this, taken a piece of paper, folded it in half drawn a right angle triangle that is seven by 11 centimeters, like so, 
and then I've just dropped in a one centimeter parallel uh, internally. So one centimeter this way, one centimeter this way. Uh, this is going to go into the seam allowance of the backpack and this is going to be folded over for the top seam allowance. And then the piece of rope is going to go, or the piece of webbing is going to go pointing up that way. So now I'm going to cut it out. There's the unfolded pattern. Now I'll transfer it over to some of the black uh, cordura fabric. Okay, so I've got my um, little triangles cut out now. Um, there's a little trick to sewing these onto, um, or sewing the webbing into these bits here that I picked up on r slash myog, or make your own gear subreddit, uh, which basically involves sort of sewing it in backwards like this, and then turning it inside out, and then, hey presto, it'll be the right way around. So I'm gonna go through that slowly on the sewing machine, uh, and hopefully you will see it all. Okay, so what I've done there is stitch them, so the main bit of coming out here, and I stitched them backwards uh, with this top row of stitches with a little bit of excess sticking out in the back. And now, uh, and when I did it, I just did a straight bit along here with a bit of um, zigzag at the edge. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip these inside out uh, and then put a bunch of extra stitches to make use of all this um, strengthening bit. Okay, just to make it super clear, that's what it means to be flipped inside out. So these are both, were both in the same orientation. Um, and now this uh, seam along the top is being perfectly done for us. And now I'm going to come in and add the stitches in here. Okay, so I decided to just go with a simple zigzag stitch uh, down the middle of those. In the past, I've done like complicated box stitches and things like that, but um, I'm getting a fair bit better with my uh, zigzag stitching. This one came out really well. I'm happy with this. Uh, this one had the length just a little bit too long, so it's not quite as neat. Uh, but overall, I think they came out pretty, pretty damn fine. So now I think it'll be time to stitch them to the backpack. Okay, so this is the back panel at the moment, and this is where we're going to stitch the um, wings onto. Um, you want to line them up with the bottom of the backpack, which remember isn't this line here because this extends up the back panel a little bit And this is the bottom panel here So I've just marked on the sides where the bottom of the back panel is, uh, where the bottom of the backpack is I'm gonna put them just on in line with the bottom of the backpack and tack them on into the seam allowance Cool, you know, I think that looks almost professional, those uh, zigzags going on down there. Happy with that. Okay, so what I'm doing now is thinking about the over-the-top strap. Um, so previously I've just used a centrally attached over-the-top piece of webbing, and that was actually a real problem in my last backpack. So this time I'm going to use um, a forked attachment, so I'm going to have an attachment here and here rather than in the middle. And I'm going to have a V over-the-top strap. Um, but to do this, I'm also going to use cordage, so that's why I've got these little line knots going on. Um, these really need to be tacked to this back panel before I go and put these on, because these are a real real nightmare uh, to line up. And when I do it, I don't want to have all these little things in the way, so really they need to be tacked on. The but is that if I tack, I don't really want to tack them onto here, because you know this is already under a lot of load, and adding extra tack holes in here just feels a bit unnecessary. So what I'm instead going to do is I've marked the midpoint of these straps. So I folded over uh, this here, marked the midpoint with a little white dot, and I'm going to uh, tack this onto these straps like this. And then that way, when I flip the straps over and stitch them onto this line, these will be lined up in the correct place. So mark the middle of this and stitch these on. And I want to stitch them perpendicular to this bottom edge because this bottom edge is level. Uh, I don't want to stitch them perpendicular to the straps themselves because otherwise they will be coming out of the backpack at an angle like that which I don't want, I want them to be going straight up. Uh, 
Okay, they're all tacked on. I really didn't put a lot of stitches in there just because these are just tacks. The main stitches that hold it in place will be the, um, the top lines of bar tacks and things like that. Um, I didn't stitch it all the way up to the edge of the fabric because I didn't want to put any more holes in there than necessary, so I put one back uh, here and right at the back here. Okay, and that's what it'll look like once it's all tacked in. So next step, I think, will be to sellotape these straps onto here and get it all lined up just temporarily so that I can then do some proper stitching. Okay, this is important, important planning here. What I've done is I've lined up exactly where I want the straps to be, added in a couple of patches of duct tape. Uh, that'll stay in the backpack um, just to hold them in place. Uh, I've marked where my duct tape limit is because I don't want to sew through the duct tape because that will go out my needle. And now I'm going to lay this on top of here and buzz the sewing machine along that edge. Probably throw in some zigzags and just, yeah, absolutely fill it with thread. Right, I've just switched over to the zipper foot. Uh, you don't need a zipper foot to do this, it just makes it a bit easier. What I'm going to do now is sew along as very close to the edge as I can um, so that the fabric, or so the strap folds as close to the foam as possible. And I'm going to do that all the way along. And then once I've done that, I'll probably switch back feet and do a zigzag across here and maybe some little bar tacks where the uh, webbing is. Oh, I just realized I forgot to film that last row of stitching, so here's a little close-up. What I did was just zigzag along here uh, and increase my zigzag intensity here. I also used the zipper foot to go really close to the edge, and then I did a zigzag between the two, so a slightly narrower zigzag. This was going really well until about here, where I had to turn the camera off because my sewing machine just exploded on me, and I had to faff with it for ages to get it working again, but hey-ho, that's how it goes. That's beautifully attached on. Let's have a look at it from the back side. Um, yeah, that all looks really nice. I think now what I need to do is go inside and make some Cuban tape and tape this puppy up. Okay, so the plan here is I'm going to need one, two, three, four pieces of tape um, to do this. So what I've done is I've bought quite a bit of um, Cuban double-sided sticky tape. Well, okay, it's just double-sided sticky tape. There's no Cuban about it. Uh, this stuff is actually really expensive. It's like a pound a linear meter, maybe even more than that, actually. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out the size pieces I need, stick them onto a piece of um, Cuban fiber, and then cut it out. Now, it's really important when you do this that you cut right up until the edge of this um, the tape once you've stuck it on, because if you leave a little bit of extra Cuban sticking over the edge, then it makes it much easier to peel the tape up afterwards, and, and you don't want that. So it's better to un overcut into the tape than undercut and leave it fa uh, flapping out. Okay, so there's one side of the double-sided sticky tape adhered to my um, Cuban. Now I'm going to cut it all out and start sticking. Found a cameraman. Okay, so I'm just uh, going to video. I'm using a little knife to chop up these things so that you can get right up close to the edge of the tape. Okay, so there's my custom uh, Cuban tape for one pound a meter instead of five pounds a meter if you were to buy it with the Cuban backing already stuck to it. Uh, stick on the tape nice and carefully to these edges. It's important you line the middle of the tape, not with the stitch, but with the seam because you want the strength to be on either side.
Right, and then you just uh, get a spoon or something and pat it down. I'm going to do the rest of them off camera because the parents want to take a walk. Okay, so while I was taping this, I realized that I had forgotten to um, sew along this seam here. So I just went and uh, threw in a straight stitch along here um, because this is the like inner reinforcement panel. And if it's not stitched to the back panel, it won't do any reinforcing. There it is, all taped up. That taped up beautifully. I think only one of them slightly wobbled off, but um, still got plenty of it on, so all in, super happy. Oh, she's looking sweet. Right, before I go and sew the bag together, we're going to tack on some little line locks. I've just cut out some sort of like five centimeter pieces of 15mm uh, webbing. Got my line locks, I'm just going to tack them on uh, 48 centimeters from the bottom on either side. Super duper, now it's big job time. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this uh, bit, I'm gonna flip it around, and I'm gonna sew, line it up in the middle really nicely, and then I'm gonna sew along that bottom edge. So I'm gonna sew that edge and that edge there following this beautiful um, seam marker that you can see through the Cuban. If it wasn't see-through, you'd obviously have to draw uh, your line on the outside. Okay, that went perfectly. I hit that line pretty much spot on the whole way. You can see this was the very first seam I sewed on the backpack, and I don't know what happened there, but that must have been a really janky one, but it doesn't matter, it's all seam allowance now. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna fold it um, in on itself like this. I'm gonna fold the um, seam we just created, or the, is it a hem? No, so fold the seam we just created, and then we're gonna, um, we're gonna fell it down to make it a super strong seam. Okay, so tips and tricks of felling a seam uh, to get it nice. Two really important things. One, you want to keep the edge of your uh, you know, whatever you're using as your edge marker, uh, you want it to line up with the thing you actually sewed, not where your plan is. So, so you can see here, like I've just missed by a tiny, tiny fraction uh, from the line. That's like a millimeter. I want to instead um, are following the line. I want to follow the actual stitching. And two, you want to put a lot of transverse tension on these two pieces of fabric here. What you don't want to do is uh, the, the fabric to bunch up like that and then stitch it down because then you'll have a horrible uh, piece on the other side. So you want to really pull these apart when you're hemming it. Okay, thumbs up, that came out great. Now what I'm gonna do is go and make up some more tape uh, and tape this seam now that it's felled before I go on and making the rest of the bag 3D because it's just easier to tape now. So I'm gonna go and make enough tape for that seam and the other two small seams, and then I'll tape that seam and then we'll come back and sew this together. There it is taped up. Tape is centered on the actual edge of between the two fabrics, not on the stitches. Okay, I just finished a beautiful taping job on this last seam here. That is come out absolutely fantastically. Probably the best corner fold I've ever done, actually. Um, so, yeah, shows my fifth time. Um, now it's time to do the two main seams.
Okay then, here it is. Put together. Very excited. I'm not gonna lie, I did finish putting this together this morning and I have already played with it a little bit and wow, I'm so happy with how this has come out. This is pack number five and it really shows how good this is right. I'm gonna switch over the camera person and you're gonna see me putting it on. Okay, so here we go, gonna put it on. See how it goes. Okay, so I've um, only put one um, sternum strap on it because the straps are a lot shorter. Okay, that's fantastic. Go on, give us a view around, see what it looks like. Oh, I carry so well. I haven't actually taken it out for a proper carry and it's just stuffed with um, like all soft blankets and things at the moment. But uh, we'll check out the bottle. So here we go. We've got. Bottles sit in there perfectly, two of those. We normally carry about 1.2-ish um, litres up front, which works really nicely, so I'm super happy with those. The two fools walk around, reach around pocket is very accessible, so you can easily get your bottles, and I'll just show you, you can actually put your hands in all the way round, so the reaching is really nice, and the, um, the can you see the blue bottom? So this has got a little bit you can go in like that, so you can get in. This is not my original design, this front entry. That is um, a really cool brand called Nashville Packs The Cutaway. Um, so yeah, super happy with it. It's come out really well. I think it looks awesome. Like, I don't know whether it's just my opinion of the looks, but like that ghostly translucent plastic. I don't know how long it's going to last, but... While it lasts, I think I'm going to get a lot of questions on the trail of what is your pack made out of? I think it is better than money can buy, so I'm super chuffed with this one. 